Hello guys, very quickly, we're going to be looking at the muscles of the forearm, right? Oh yes, and you know this is your forearm, right? Or your antibrachium. And this is a lesson 9 muscles that has to do with the what the forearm i'd like you to pay me solid attention as we go together in the muscles of the forearm what are they they are divided into two as well the anterior compartment and the posterior compartment but when you come to forearm it becomes even much more interesting because even the anterior compartment right this is the anterior compartment of the forearm this is the posterior compartment of the forearm even in this anterior compartment of the forearm they're divided into two groups one what is called the superficial group or the superficial anterior compartment muscles of the forearm and then the deep anterior compartment muscles of the forearm. Aya. When you get to the posterior compartment, there are also two. The superficial posterior compartment muscles of the forearm and the deep posterior compartment muscles of the forearm. If you play with it, aya, don't try to... Anything anterior compartment, I beg you, all of them, they are flexor muscles. Posterior compartments, what are they? Extensor muscles. That's the first thing you should write down in your notes. Anterior compartment muscles, whether for, for, uh, whether for arm or for forearm, anterior compartment, they are flexor muscles. Posterior compartment muscles, what are they? Extensor muscles. Now, what are we going to start with? You know, that means we're going to learn four, we're going to have four classes on that forearm alone. So we're going to have the first class as the superficial anterior compartment muscles of the forearm. Then we're going to have this deep anterior compartment muscles of the forearm. Then the superficial um, posterior compartment muscles of the forearm. And then the deep posterior compartment muscles of the word forearm. So we're going to start with the first, which is the superficial anterior compartment muscles of the forearm. So this whole class is under the superficial anterior compartment muscles of the forearm. Are you ready? Yeah, let's go. Hold on a bit. A complete series of classes in anatomy, all of them, physiology, all the physiology, biochemistry, all, they are available in the LearnLift app. So just head down to Play Store or App Store and type LearnLift, right? And then download the app and you have access to all your classes and the continuation of this lesson you are watching right now. For the now, peace out. So in the superficial anterior compartment muscles of the forearm, the question is, how many are they? What and what should you know about them? They are just five in number. How many? Five. Sir, must I know all these muscles in my head and be able to call all of them? Yes. That's why you are a medic. Know them. The first is called the pronator teres. What is it called? Pronator teres. The second is called the flexor capi radialis. Aside the flexor capi radialis, we have what is called the palmaris longus. Palmaris longus. Then we have what is called the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor capi onaris. Ah, hey, wait, hey, hey. you know hard. You are just learning it for the first time. That's why. Yeah, let's go together. Now, just remember, you know, this is your hand, right? This your, this is your, your, your normal head and position them like this. Look at me. Let's go. Position them the way I'm positioning it. Position them like this. Are you with me? So, how will your thumb go? If you position them like this, your thumb, all of them, all these five muscles, number one, they have a common flexor origin. What do they have? This point here is the common flexor origin. What is it called? Common flexor origin. And the common flexor origin, all of them are running from, is the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Don't worry, I will show you. The medial epicondyle of the humerus. Is it lateral epicondyle or medial epicondyle? Medial epicondyle of the humerus is their common flexor origin. The first is the pronator teres. So pronator teres will run from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and then it will run lateral. It will start from medial. All of them are starting from medial, going towards lateral. So your flexor capi radialis will follow next. Then the palmaris longus is a long muscle. It will come down to the palm. And then the third and the fourth is the what? Flexor digitorum what? Superficialis. I will explain. And the last is the flexor capi what? Onaris. Position your hand like this. These are the five. You know the five. What is the first there? The first is the flexor. And that's the pronator what? Teres. That's the first. Flexor capi what? Radialis. The next is called the what? Fle uh, Bamaris longus. Flexor digitorum superficialis. And the flexor capi what? Onaris. If you watch all of them, are you hearing? Flexor. 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 All of them are flexor muscles. What's the acronym for all of them? The acronym is simple. It is PF, PFF, PF, PFF. Come on, PF, PFF. Come on, PF, 
PFF, PF, PFF, PF, PFF, PFF. That's all. We are let's go. If you get this very quickly with me, we are let's go. Now look at this diagram. Now, what do you see there? Number one is this point I'll pick out. That's the common flexor origin. What do you call that, that common flexor origin is still the same thing that you have here? That's why it is called the medial epicondyle of the humerus. What is it called? All the muscles in the superficial anterior compartment, all the superficial muscles, right, in the anterior compartment of the forearm, where did they originate from? They originate from the common flexor origin, called the what? Medial epicondyle of the what? Humerus. That's the first thing. And the first of that muscle is your what? Your pronator teres. You see, your pronator teres is running from media to what? Lateral. The second is your flexor capi radialis. Flexor capi what? Radialis. Don't worry, I will explain what they do very fast. The next is the palmaris longus. It is a long muscle, you see, as it runs down the tendon. Now continue and come into the what? The capas, right? Palmaris longus is going to the palm of the hand. And then the fourth is the flexor digitorum superficialis. This is the guy here. Flexor digitorum what? Superficialis. And the fifth is the flexor capi ulnaris. The flexor capi ulnaris runs down and then get to the pisiform bone and then it ends there. But don't stress, ya. you don't know the one that is pisiform bone yet. As you go, you will learn all of them. If you come down to this side here, this is the pronator teres, your flexor capi radialis, right? You see the muscle down. After that, your palmaris what? Longus. The palmaris longus run down and the tendon is now running down like this. And then you now have flexor capi what? Or naris that is coming down like this. And all of that is just it. If you get that very quickly with me, let's look at them one after the other. So the first among them is your pronator what? Teres. Pronator teres. From the name pronator, look at it. If you stand anatomically now, and you want to pronate your hand, your hand is facing upwards, right? If you pronate your hand, that means you will turn it downwards. What is enabling us to turn this forearm downwards? Pronator teres is number one. Are you getting it now? So, your from the name, teres, pronator, that means it will pronate the what? The forearm, right? Teres, teres, is telling us that the, the muscle there is kind of like long, right? And cylindrical, cylindrical in shape or round in shape. That's your pronator teres for you. Another thing very fast, the second muscle is your flexor capi radialis. From the name flexor, it will help you in flexing the what? The forearm, right? Look at it now. It is going to flex something. It's from the where? From the carpal bones. It will flex. Understand the name first so that you know the function. From the name flexor, that means it will flex the carpi. Carpi, that's the carpal bones, but at the radial side. Oh. The carpal bones at the radial side, we said that ulna is medial, radius is lateral. So at the radial side, has to do with the thumb, towards the thumb region. So you see, all this side here, this is why the guy is coming down, the tendon is coming down like this to come and be inserted here. Are you getting it now? So the flexor carpi radialis, it will help to flex the hand, right? The carpal, that's the carpal bones. But at the what? Radius side. And the radius side is where you have the thumb. It is lateral. These guys, all these, all these, all these guys that you are seeing here, it is the flexor capi radialis that is happening in flexing all of them. As you move, when we are learning nerves one by one, you see all of these things in practical terms. But understand where the name is coming from first. Are you getting it now? The next very fast is called the palmaris longus. Why do we call it palmaris? It is called palmaris because it is going to the palm of the hand, right? And longus. Mean it is long. Palmaris longus means it is a long muzzle. The muzzle is coming down and then it now continues with its tendon. The tendon is coming into the what the palm of the hand. That's the palmaris what longus for you. Where does it originate from? The medial epicondyle of the what humerus because all of them have a common flexor what origin. After the palmaris longus, the nest is called the flexor digitorum superficialis. From the name flexor, that means it will flex digitorum. It will go and flex the digits. Superficialis, that means it is superficial muscle. Are you seeing it now? Flexor is the room what? Superficialis. And the next is called the flexor capi ulnaris. Very quickly, when it comes to creating accounts, how do you create an account? Very easy. Let me give you the steps. First and foremost, you see create account and login. You only log in, right, when you already have an account. Since you don't have an account, click, click on create account. When you get there, put in your phone number, put in your phone number. After putting in your phone number, you click on continue, right? Your first name, of course, you put in your first name there. If your first name is James, you put in James as your first name. 
your last name, if your last name is Victor, you put in what? Victor as your last name. Then you come to email address, right? Put in your email address there very quickly. James112 at gmail.com at gmail.com Then your password, right? Oh yes. Those of you that like, if you want to use your name, your password can just be like six digits, right? Oh yes. So let me say James 12, James 12 as the password, right? Fill everything accurately and correctly. James 12, don't jump any stage. If not, your account is not going to open for you. Select education. Under select education, of course, university. You click university. Leave secondary, primary, leave the others. Click university or tertiary, click it. Come to select level. Under select level, you go and select your level. If it's 100 level, 200 level, of course, all these are the university classes. Click on 200 level and click on create account. Once you click on create account, what will happen? Your class will load straight and then your profile will be set up and then it will take you towards to class easy and direct. So you see it. This is how you create your account. And then from here, you can see that you have your anatomy here, your upper limb, your lower limb, separately embryology, histology, systemic anatomy. Those ones are for nursing. Your CVS, cardiovascular system, your blood physiology, excitable tissues, systemic physiology, intro to biochemistry, your bowel molecules, BCM for nursing, nursing psychology. You have access to every single thing in the app. Now, let me see what is in the app. Let's say, for example, upper limb. You click on the upper limb, right? You can see that you have your classes there already waiting for you. Overview of the upper limb, pectoral region, arm region, forearm, hand, all of them, part by part. When I click on the overview of the upper limb, of course, I'll just match it straight to my class. Parts of the upper limb, one part of the upper limb, two bone of, bones of the upper limb, joints of the upper limb, muscles. You see, all your classes are there for you, right? Okay, let me say I want to start now and then I want to watch joints of the upper limb. All you just need to do is click on that particular class that you want to watch, joints of the upper limb, and what will happen? Your class will load, and your classes will start playing for you immediately. Shall you see? You may choose to say, okay, I want to rotate it, right? Oh, yes, rotate it. And you start following your classes immediately, easy and direct. You may choose to say, okay, you want to forward, you want to pause, you want to back, um, back forward, anyone you want to do. Out. You take it forward, and what happened? You can see all of them very, very easy. And the sweet part is that there are questions for you at the end of every class. Are you with me? So that's for that. And you may choose to go back and then go to the notes section of the app. Oh, yes, when you get to the notes section of the app, of course, the notes are there. Well organized and arranged for you. And you can zoom in and then start following back to back, and you are following. You may even choose to go and start answering questions. Questions are there for you and there are answers. You start um, following through every singular facet of it and you are learning on your own. And there is CPT in the app as well for you. A lot of other aspects that you can follow up. All of this in the LearnLift app. Same way you have for anatomy. That's how you have for physiology. That's how you have for biochemistry. Are you getting it now? For the now, bye-bye. What will it go and do? It will flex the carpals at the ulnar side. Ulnar. Ulnar. That means your little finger. And so that's your ring finger side. Yeah, that's where you have it. Are you getting it now? So that's why it is flexed up carpi words ulnaris. This is the guy there. So I want to go. Give me the five of them. What are the five of them? P, F. Then your P, F, F. So I want to go. Call their names for me. Number one is the what? The pronator word. Teres. Aside the pronator terrace, what do we have? Your flexor carpi what? Radialis. The one that is going towards pronator terrace, flexor carpi radialis towards the radial side. The long one that will now go down. That's the word palmaris what? Longus. They will now have the flexor digitorum what? Superficialis. And the fifth is the word flexor carpi what? Ulnaris. That's why we call it the PF, PFF. You get this very simple, very quickly. You see that it's very simple, easy, and direct. Yeah, let's go. Question time. Answer all these questions correctly. Are you good to go? Question 16. The question says, which muscle in the superficial anterior compartment of the forearm is primarily responsible for pronation of the forearm? So which one will pronate the forearm? Option A says, flexor carpi or naris? Never. 
Option B says Palmaris longus. Option C says pronator teres. Option D says flared. What is the answer? Of course, pronation is the word pronator word teres. Option C is the answer. Very easy and direct. Look at this question very fast. Question 17. Answer it for me. The question says which muscle is absent in about 15% of the population? Now follow me. From your PF, PFF, right? There is one that is absent. The tendon is absent in about 15% of the population. It is the long one. That's the word palmaris, what longus is the answer. Option A says, let's go. Flezor capa onaris, palmaris longus. C says, flezor digitorum superficialis. And then T says, pronator teres. What is the answer? Palmaris longus is absent. The tendon is absent in about 15% of the population. What is the answer? Option B is the correct answer. Does it make sense? Look at the next question here. Question 18 all the way. The question says, which of the following muscles does not originate from the medial epicondyle of the humerus? If you don't come from the medial epicondyle, that means you're not coming from the common flesh origin. You are not part of the PF, then PFF family. What is the PF, PFF family? Your pronator teres, then your flesh of capi what radialis, your palmaris longus, your flesh of digitorum superficialis, and your flesh of capi what onaris. You are not part of them. Or Sean A says, pronator teres, this guy is part. Option B says, Flesor Capai Radialis, part of them. Option C says, Brachio Radialis, never a part. Option D says, Palmaris Longus, part. What is the answer? Option C is the correct answer. Does it make sense, bro? So your Brachio Radialis is never what a part of it. If you get that very quickly, we are good to go. Look at the next question very fast. Q1, A, who is excited? You drop the answer for me in the comment section of the app, right? Drop it in the Q&A section or the comment section. Drop the answer for me. Let's see. The question all the way here says, which muscle is superficial? Ha, <laughs> superficial muscle. And run medial to the flexor capi radialis muscle. It will run medial to it. Let's go. Option A says, pronator teres. B says, flexor capi onaris. B says, C says, palmaris longus. And then it's a flexor digitorum superficialis. Now look at it. Your P, F, P, F, F, right? Yes, so... Which of them run media? Now, listen, you know, these guys, Latra, Latra, all of them, they are running from Latra to be media. And they say, which of them is superficial? And run media to the flexor capi radialis. This is your flexor capi radialis. So, which one is now media to the flexor capi radialis? Is it the palmaris longus or it is the pronator teres? Drop the answer for me in the comment section or in the Q&A segment of the app. Let me see whether you are correct. If you get this very quickly with me, bro, guess what? I'll see you in the next class. And in that next class, I'm going to be looking at the deep anterior compartment muscles of the world for um, For the now, bro, peace out. Hope you've enjoyed this class. Guess what? To follow up for more classes, just download the LearnLift app, whether on Play Store or App Store, and then follow up your classes. You must do extremely well. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.